Hi and welcome to the channel. Um, today's review, um, we're having a look at a Suzuki Ignis. Um, now I'll be honest, this is not the kind of car that I would ever look at buying, even new or used. Um, but the opportunity has arisen to have a go in one. Uh, as we can see, it's actually a courtesy car. Um, so my Jimny is in for a service and this is what I've been given uh, to run around in while that's in. Um, now I have driven an Ignis before. Um, this one here, I think they might call it an SZ3. Um, it doesn't actually say on it anywhere, um, but it's a, a real base spec. We've got um, a very nice old fashioned plastic uh, wheel trims on there. And the interior is also looking uh, rather basic as well. Um, now, I know there are people out there that will want to buy a car like this or need to buy a car like this. Um, so I will endeavour to try and look for the good points on it. Uh, I would say I quite like the styling. Um, I'm not sure if they've revised the front end a little bit since launching these. I uh, can't remember, but the, the rear of them, they kind of got this sort of funky little harking back to some sort of older models, I think. Um, yeah, kind of looks a bit funky. Can't really complain about that. Um, so don't get me wrong, there are some good things on this car. Um, Firstly, it seems to be pretty frugal. Um, it's given an indicated 58 mpg when I picked it up. No idea how accurate the trip is, um, but I think that's right bang on the money for, for what Suzuki claim for these. Um, believe it or not, it is a hybrid. Um, although I believe the, the type of hybrid this is, um, is actually just a, a very clever um, alternator, which doubles up as a small electric motor. Um, I think it's only hybrid in name. I can't believe it really contributes all that much. Um, although to be fair, 58 MPG does sound pretty good from a, a little five seater car. Um, what can we say about it? It has a boot, fairly small, but it's a small car, but fairly good shape. seats which look sort of adequate enough um, the material it's actually the same material I think that's in the chimney it does feel a little cheap the seat material but it's actually quite nice the seats are a bit squishy um, but they're comfortable and I quite like the blue stitching um, so I'd say that's one thing I do like about it we've got some nice uh, retro wind-up windows in the back um, pretty cool little bottle holder in the door as well and at the front, um, we've also got another cool little sort of bottle holder in the door. I wish the Jimny had something like that. Um, but that's probably about the only good things I can really say about the interior. Um, you do get electric windows in the front. Um, I believe there's different specs um, of trim you can get. This one has these weird sort of blue handles and a bit of weird blue trim down there. I mean, it kind of brighten up, brightens up a, an otherwise dull cabin, um, but my word, it does look awful. Very cheap, shiny and nasty. And considering it's a, it's a white car, um, I don't really understand the reason why they're blue. Um, so the seats are fine. Comfy, relatively supportive for what they are. Um, the rest of the interior, let's have a look, let's just grab the key. Um, I have to say, it's a bit of a disappointment in here. I mean, I'll be honest, considering it's 2022, and this is a current model that's fairly recent, um, stepping into this does feel like getting into a 1990s Vauxhall. Um, it is pretty dire. Um, this particular one doesn't have a screen by the looks of it. Again, I think it's because it's a base model. Um, we've got a very plasticky steering wheel, which, I don't know, just isn't actually that nice to hold. Uh, a lovely plasticky, plasticky dash and, and trim panels everywhere. Um, it, it's just not really that nice. Um, I had a, a Smart 4.2 uh, before I bought the Jimny. 
which is similar sort of price range to this. Um, and obviously you can get that in the four seater as well, you know, the four door. Um, the smart car was another level above. Well, actually not another level. I would say several levels above in terms of quality um, and tactile feel over the Suzuki. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my Jimny. I think that's great. Um, and that's got some nice design touches. Not perfect, but it's a really nice vehicle for the money. The Cygnus, I don't know, it's a bit of a nasty little horrid car, really. That uh, kind of does a job, but I wouldn't want to put my money into one. Um, on the dash, uh, dash layout's kind of okay. We've got a small little um, sorry, 1990s Game Boy style uh, screen uh, and some dials. I seem to have a huge dial to only get to 130 mile an hour which when you've only got 83 brake horsepower seems excessive. And then a great big sort of blank space down the right hand side of it. Um, again, it's one of these cars that doesn't have 30 or 50 on the speedo, which are speeds that we drive at quite a lot in the UK. A bit annoying. Um, engine, looks like it redlines just over 6,000 RPM. We've got, a, again, a nice retro five-speed gearbox, which has a really, really clunky gear change. Um, it's not what you'd call exactly a nice gear change. Um, also, the clutch pedal in this is awful. You don't notice it when you've got no load on it, when it's not in gear and the engine's running. So, actually, well, like you can hit a little bit. I don't know if you can hear those creaks, but it's a really, really juddery, jerky clutch pedal, which in traffic makes this thing horrible to drive. Um, really easy to almost stall it because you're trying to bring your foot up off the clutch smoothly and the pedal just doesn't follow the motion of your foot. Um, I don't know if this is an isolated example or whether they're all like it. Really not impressed. Um, it's quite quite nasty to drive in that regard. Uh, anyhow, we'll get it out on the road and see what it does. Um, being a modern car, it has a few annoyances, like if you turn the key now, it won't start. You've got to put your foot on the, the clutch. Which is odd, you don't need to do that in the chimney. Um, but obviously it's a, a safety measure that must be in place. Um, as we can see, we've got 58 MPG on the trip there, which is, is pretty cool. Uh, I'll be honest, my smart car was not that frugal. Um, and that had similar sort of power, that was 80 horsepower and supposedly weighed less. Um, so it is meant to be some sort of hybrid thing, but you know, I wouldn't play, uh, give that too much concern, really. I don't think it adds that much. I looked the specs up for the electric motor, and I can't remember what it was, but it was very, very low horsepower output that um, I'm not sure you'd ever really notice it. It must help, perhaps, with the emissions a little bit, um, and obviously the branding to call it a hybrid. But anyhow, let's see what it drives like. So here we are in the Ignis. Well, oh, I hope that comes from the camera. Listen to that lovely, silky smooth gear changer. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh dear. 2022, eh? Right. Um, yeah, it's a little hatchback. Um, I would say the engine's quite nice. It's uh, it's a lot quicker than 83 horsepower would suggest um so i had a smart car prior to this which i have no idea how they stacked up performance wise but um this certainly feels more lively uh, it certainly feels like you've got a more, lot more than 83 horsepower under your right foot um i believe it's a 1.2 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder having had a look at the Suzuki website with something like a 83 horsepower probably metric horsepower um, and 107 foot-pounds of torque um, and it's, it's quite smooth it's quite quiet um, seems to rev quite well we're only revving to just over 6,000 rpm um, but it's not like a lot of modern engines that kind of feel breathless or struggle at the top end um, the car itself rides kind of firm. Um, that corner's pretty flat. I wouldn't say it's particularly exciting or fun. Capable in a mundane kind of sense. Um, I, 
I don't think this is the kind of car that you would buy if you are any sort of car enthusiast or driving enthusiast. Um, this is very much a, a white goods car, which aptly is it's in a white colour. Um, you know, it is very much a utility of if you had to have a car and you need to get from A to B and you don't want to spend much on it, this is probably an ideal sort of thing to go and buy. Um, the driving position, not too bad, very sort of a front wheel drive hatch um, where the seat is in relation to the pedals. Pedals feel slightly offset to the right, um, but not in a bad way. The engine feels quite grunty, I mean we're in fourth gear there, it's kind of a little incline. It's 1100 RPM and that's still pretty smooth. Um, again, that's quite impressive for such a small displacement engine. You know, you, you go back, you know, to the 1990s um, and certainly engines didn't perform this well, even when larger displacement. Um, but I am probably running out of good things to really say about it. Uh, it's just something to get you from A to B. Um, I believe they do a full drive version of this. I don't think it would be any better to drive. I imagine it weighs slightly more, uses slightly more fuel and is a bit slower. Um, but obviously if you live in areas where you get inclement weather, um, full drive would actually be quite a sensible vehicle. Um, a set of all seasons on a, a four-wheel drive one of these would probably get you absolutely everywhere. Um, so I, I can certainly see some sense in that. Um, although, once again, I just don't see any sort of motoring enthusiast having any sort of enjoyment from driving or owning a vehicle like this. Um, yeah, it's pretty small. Probably doesn't weigh much. I don't know what they are, about a ton, I guess. Um, it's got no real zing, excitement or sense of occasion though. Um, I dare say if you put it on an interesting V road, you can go and throw it around some corners and you know, driving anything can be fun. Um, I would say it's quite noisy in here. I feel like I'm having to shout a little bit. There's a constant sort of sound. I, I don't know whether it's tyres, wind noise, engine. It, it's got a real sort of um, sort of drumming hum sound to it. It feels a bit like being inside an acoustic guitar. Um, I'd also say I don't think it actually rides that well either. I think at higher speed it's not too bad, but um, it feels kind of unrefined on bumpy roads or potholes at low speed. Um, I'd certainly say it feels less refined and less comfortable than the live axle Jimny, which I think is probably quite a bold statement to make in 2022. Um, yeah, I think probably the best thing about this vehicle is the engine, um, although obviously put that engine into a bigger, heavier vehicle and uh, it's, it's going to feel underpowered. Um, interestingly, we're only on sort of narrow, non-performance orientated tyres. Um, I assume we have some sort of a traction control and stability system that will actually light up the wheels quite readily, especially when it's wet.